Is it on autofocus? Probably. <laughs> oh shit, did you check? <laughs> My autofocus not very good. If it's on manual and if you're autofocus... Oh no, it's on manual. It's on manual? Yeah, yeah. Not on manual? It's on manual. It is on manual? Yeah, yeah. But it is in focus? Yeah. Pakka? Pakka. Okay. I will find out in post. <laughs> you guys will find out at the zero zero mark. <laughs> Rolling. Right. You want to do the clap? Nice. Let's get it started. I still tinker with audio on this mic, even though it's this close and every single detail of my voice can be heard. Yeah. yeah. I still like boosting it in post and then leveling everything and then I, I like doing that. It's too much bro. Post work is... <laughs> but Da Vinci makes it so easy. True. I'm still familiarizing myself with Da Vinci, so... The audio in uh, audio tab, mm. I just do a few things and like, bro, the difference is night and day. Mm. Anyway. anyway <laughs> start, like, properly. Yeah, I've not done my introduction yet, which is a first for the Candid Corner. Show your face. Oh, my face. Where? Oh, there's the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we have a three cam setup going on, so full-on uh, podcast setup. In Philly Wonka's house. Hey. Uh, <laughs> for uh, regular watchers, I'm sure you've seen him featured once. <laughs> or twice. Or twice. <laughs> I'm not keeping count, but apparently someone <laughs> is. <laughs> Just as an introduction to everyone, Philip is a really close friend of mine. He has been for the past four years. We've gotten a lot more closer in the last uh, year or so. Yeah. Last six months, I would say. Since since my July trip to India. Probably. But like we started getting closer when uh, the reels were happening. Oh, yeah. yeah it the was, reels was a phase. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like a very gradual transition from yeah. there. Mm. Actually, we got close when we liked the same girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I did not know we were talking about my love life today. <laughs> ah, love life. Ah, love life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, for obvious reasons, we cannot disclose the name of this person. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that was one of the reasons we got closer. It, it feels weird to say that. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, we both knew that she was out of our league. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so, so we both just ag- admitted. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's never gonna happen, bro. But like, keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one of the reasons Philip and I bonded uh, was because we liked the same girl. That was one. And another reason was Philip and I were one of the few people in our college who were not from India. Yeah, technically. So NRIs. Yes. And an NRI experience of living in Bombay is something very few people in our college can do. Maybe, or understand. Or understand. Maybe one other friend that we have in common, she might be able to. And then two of us. Yeah. I don't think there's much else in college who can understand that. Or, yeah. Yeah, in general also. Yeah. How has, how, tell me about how life has been... Um, living in Bombay for the last four years compared to how it was before in Qatar? Hmm. Life in Bombay was just like a tragic hit of like reality. (laughs) I didn't even know Hindi. Mm. And I struggled so much in just basic navigation, but I had that like adventurous spirit, Mm. which made me want to explore life after I stepped out of the cage. Mm. Because as an NRI, you feel so caged mm. in your own, like, country. But it's not your country, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. And that freedom was something that was overwhelming. Mm. It was over the top. But in terms of quality of life, in terms of the luxuries that you once thought was normal, mm. started to... Not having that started to mm. really influence how you behave. Mm. So, 
yeah like i was used to having meat three times a day i was used to the best fruits like i didn't know what the fuck was mango season because i have i had mangoes 24/7 <laughs> 365 right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like i come over here and they're like sorry mango nahi hai <laughs> <I'm> like what <laughs> okay and say like, oh <laughs> and yeah it's just little things like that subtle differences subtle nuances which is so striking mm. and my first year looked very different from my second year and it looked very different from my third year and it's looking very different from the fourth year right now since yeah, graduation yeah. yeah and as an anara it's like you're like starting life fresh and then you're leveling up every year mm. as we are looking forward to new year i'm just looking forward to the next level up yeah i think the reason we also sort of bonded was not only are we anaras we are also the first generation that grew up in those foreign countries yeah because our parents were the ones who migrated there yes and it's different from like we migrated there or yeah. we've been there for generations yeah so we are kind of seeing the first hand effects of what migration could do right to a family to the kids and the type of lives they lead in a positive way or in a negative way both for sure yeah depends on where you're migrating to true that yeah i feel like both our parents shifted to a country where you had to work your ass off <laughs> yeah but you got rewarded for it for sure but i don't know it's like being the parent or uh, being the child of an immigrant has its it has its effects Okay. In the sense where okay, there was this uh, Hasan Minhaj uh stand-up comedy that I'm not sure if you've seen. No. It's on Netflix, really nice. I forgot the name of it. Uh but I'll add it in post later. <laughs> <laughs> And uh basically he's also so he went to the US. Uh like his parents went to the US. That's where he was born and raised. And now he's a stand-up comedian. And he was telling his story about how he grew up. and i could relate to that a lot because i went through something similar as well where okay as the migrant member that you are going there with your wife or you're going there with your husband whatever partner you have to make it there otherwise yeah. the leap that you took to leave your country was not worth it yeah. so you have to work your ass yeah. off which means you work okay maybe not 24/7 in some cases but you work a lot yeah. so much so that you don't get as much family time as yeah. what you hear from your cousins or your friends who stayed back in india right so as the child you're seeing this first hand yeah which is why i think i have this fear of setting my life in order as early as possible in me mm-hmm. cuz i you know behind the back of my head behind the back of my head <laughs> <laughs> and the, <back> <laughs> the back of my head yeah that shit i missed out on a lot of fun family time because both my parents were just busy trying to earn yeah and that earning gave us a very good life yeah undoubtedly but it was at the cost of something yeah and if i want to have a family then i want to make it so that i don't compromise on family time while chasing for the money chasing for the bag and i feel like if you have most of it sorted out by the time you are ready to marry i don't know if the mics pick this up but the dogs are agreeing with you <laughs> <laughs> welcome to mumbai welcome to mumbai <laughs> It's okay. I think we can continue. <laughs> yeah, but like, damn, bro, <laughs> how rude! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was actually downstairs. I was recording a video for my YouTube, mm. which I've been procrastinating the edit for for I don't know why because it mm. actually is a very good video. 
I think you mentioned this. You recorded it with uh, yeah. that friend of his, yeah. And those dogs down there. <laughs> oh, same dogs. Same dogs <laughs> attacked me, bro. Oh shit! What as happened? in, as in, they're they're friends of mine. You okay. met them in June. It's those dogs. The little one. I don't think that I met Lakshmi, the dogs. Lakshmi held a little dog. That was a cat, right? On the when we went to fix your fix your car. and then that's when you realized your car is unfixable yeah <laughs> <laughs> uncle and auntie <laughs> if you're watching <laughs> next time don't give car <laughs> don't give car please i don't know how they allowed me that <laughs> um but i literally went up to them like these are dogs that i knew from yeah. childhood their childhood <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> those be some old dogs then bro <laughs> <laughs> no they're like adolescents now you know throwing yeah. tantrums yeah. but i went up to them they recognized me cuz dogs are a nice smell and they came up to me and they started cuddling right mm. and i'm like okay no like stop because they were a little filthy mm. and then like i kneeled down and like immediately as i kneeled down this dog head butted me like he had a running start and he head butted me and he knocked me off the ground bro damn it was not like an aggressive bite or anything yeah. it was just like a fuck you <laughs> yeah pets do that sometimes yeah i've had two days of being in pet owner whatever really last weekend i was with yash in pune okay and I lived with a pet for the first time ah, basically. Okay, got it. So I spent 2 days with this cat Evie. So cute. But she left her marks all over me. <laughs> My right arm is scratched <laughs> fully. <laughs> But you know like that feeling of having pets around you. Yeah. Whether it's a domesticated pet or this sort of pet which like street dogs that you see regularly this is not something you see in singapore not that many people have pets because right. it's very expensive to raise yeah. a pet in singapore and there are no street dogs you might see an occasional street cat but that's also become pretty rare now so as an nra mumbai has always sort of been an escape for me because i don't get this sort of chill feeling these sort of stories to tell where i fell in love with this cat in in 2 days not even 2 days i fell in love with her early only i just realized when i had to leave the cat <laughs> back in pune but yeah the fact that in 2 days i felt like that it's very hard to find that sort of a feeling in singapore or in a country that's not india mm. as an indian i agree was that the same in qatar yeah. like did you have stray dogs and cats no, around like, in the streets no like i had one pet one attempt at a pet <laughs> two <Okay>. love birds <laughs> okay <laughs> and i was like bhai ye to anna ne ye to kya like <laughs> they're not laying any eggs <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> and i was like i gave up on them in like a week Oh damn! Oh, how, how old were you? <laughs> I was in sixth grade. Six, so like eleven, twelve-ish. Yeah. Hmm. And my parents. I'm judging you a little bit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> if you if you said you were like seven, eight, and you had that sort of a tantrum, I I can understand. <laughs> But at eleven, twelve, you should be able to understand. <laughs> See, I was, I was very, um, not ready to have a pet. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Like I didn't know how to care for a pet. Okay. I hope you gave them away to someone. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Okay. No, like they didn't die. Okay, okay. Thank My God. parents took care of them for like five months. Okay, nice. And then like right before we had to leave for a break to India. Right. We just gave it back to the shop that we got it from. Okay. Yeah. And did you get it back then when you went back? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like the classic tale of oh you know our dog. it went away to a far away farm <laughs> like yes. a way to tell the children that oh it's not dead it's it's just somewhere else 
So maybe your love birds have flown away. Maybe they maybe. migrated. Yeah, maybe they migrated. <laughs> Oh, man. I pity the kids. <laughs> ah, maybe they'll have a podcast of their own someday. Oh, <laughs> that'd be trippy. That'd be nice. <laughs> Everybody should have a podcast. Mm. For sure, a podcast is fun. It it's a way to open up friendships. Mm. Like if I just have a setup like this on the daily. and more I people just, will want to come over and, yeah, it's yeah just people just come over and like we talk shit yeah <laughs> it'd be so fun that is true actually but returning to the nai thing yeah can't do this in singapore bro. can't do this in qatar <laughs> damn india is a land of great opportunities <laughs> for sure for sure but it's just it's hard to find opportunities or create opportunities if you will because mm-hmm. i am mm-hmm. creating an opportunity for myself with this right yeah so am i exactly i didn't want to rely on anyone else or anything else i just wanted to do my own shit yeah and that's my definition of success but i know a lot of our classmates and all went and did different paths but also very predictable or typical indian paths i feel mm. um in terms of either straight away going for masters or straight away entering the industry doing set work yeah where you're just a bts photographer mm. or you're just an intern not even getting paid uh case in point me also same thing in that environment i love it i love set work i love being on a set but i also want to do something like if i'm creating something whether it's a video whether it's a film whatever my heart should be in it i should want to relate to the story i had no idea what film i was going into i was not given the script so i didn't even have to sign an nda so i can actually tell you shit about the movie <laughs> before the movie releases <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the point i'm trying to make is uh, i love set life but i want to create my own shit right i want control over the art that i'm making If my name is going to be in a credit it should be for something I'm proud of doing not something that paid me right that is also important very key aspect of life mm-hmm. and surviving mm-hmm. but I feel like if I chase money then I'm losing out on my creativity and what I'm doing now what not a lot of people have the freedom to create whenever I want to I might lose that if i focus on the money yeah for the next 2 to 3 years which are incredibly crucial given that we've just graduated and heading towards a into the workforce basically yeah if we screw up the transition or yeah if we screw up the transition we're basically lengthening it before we reach what is optimal for what yeah. we want yeah so that's why i'm just i'm creating on my own so that there's no higher power above me to tell yeah. me to no, do this by right. this time yeah for something i don't even want to do yeah and you know what's really interesting today i met a designer he designs his own stuff and he was elected as like some big um organization i think their young talent and he was 38 30. Yeah. And he designs stuff uh like chairs. He designs lamps. Lamps. Yeah. Okay. And they're like very special lamps. Like he has a mushroom lamp which wow. is like a it's it's a full fabric mushroom and the entire lamp lights up evenly. And he has uh the stone parchment lamp which basically is the sticky sheet that you put on stone that's been exposed to some chemicals which loosen up a layer of the stone <laughs> you lost me bro <laughs> and then they put the parchment paper and they get the stone on the paper bro is crazy shit ah, bro that's art <laughs> is so art, crazy <laughs> 
he got elected uh, he got nominated as the best for that and he sponsored a trip to germany to display that and on the way to his factory he was like guys start your own shit and do it as soon as you can because the sooner you start it the easier life is going to be for you mm-hmm. because this is the path that everybody wants to go into right mm-hmm. it's just they spend a lot of years trying to fortifying something that's secure mm-hmm. but not really mm-hmm. but they they have the illusion that it is yeah and then after that trying to transition into it which is so much more difficult yeah counterpoint to that too we've also heard a lot in our lives from older people where they say these are your younger years mm. just enjoy it for now right you can work hard later because all of them have that regret that when we were younger we should have done more crazy shit we should have done stuff that you know we regretted that that sort of shit like you know but that's the thing right fun stuff yeah but like what if work feels like fun to you like work is literally play yeah in that case then you are winning at life yeah <laughs> i guess and like for you doesn't work be isn't it the same as play the point is you're creating what you want to create yeah and if you get money doing that you wouldn't want to do anything else okay yeah makes sense so is literally you start young and you focus on this where it doesn't really feel like work mm. so you're not like slaving away you don't feel that you don't regret that mm. later mm. it's more of positioning yourself to be so thankful that you did it you are enjoying this process right now see you may be comfortable in that sense like financially or doing something you really love even at the age of 50 mm-hmm. but what you're saying is mirroring a lot of what our parents did when they migrated technically because we are in this very weird bracket of nri kids mm-hmm. you and i also migrated yeah back to india yeah for at least for me it was 2 years for it's you for you it's been 4 years yeah so don't you think that you are sort of repeating the patterns that our parents did of migrating no not migrating migrating is fine but you're doing the same thing after migrating where you're just focusing on work every single day yeah, because then sure. you have kids you may be in a financially good position yeah but they've also seen you grow up continuing that hard work that you are doing right now yeah but like it literally won't be hard work i want to position myself where i'm working literally like an hour a day that's fine 2 hours a day but life mein thoda challenge hona chahiye <laughs> yeah for sure like it's, if you're just doing dull work every day it's not dull work right yeah but if it's if it's not difficult it's not challenging your brain if you're doing easy things every day but it won't be easy also it'll be like just hard enough where i feel like i want to top myself and it's just going to be easy enough for me to be like ah, i can do it Yeah but you realize not a lot of people have that capability to balance that. Yeah which is why I want to have it. Okay fair enough. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> And I could have advantages of looking at life in a very different lens. That's for sure. But I feel like both parties have their own pros and their own cons. Like we may have that perspective which they may not have but they've also grown up in this sort of happy environment that we've been chasing yeah and for them life is content like that yeah i know a few of my close friends who are doing similar stuff to us whom i've told us very good opportunity for work you will earn a lot and you'll be doing really good creative work also but the only reason they're not leaving india is because they have these friendships built up over the years they don't want to lose touch on that so they'd rather have that than a quality of life so to yeah. speak for sure yeah yeah 
I think there's a reason why we think the way that we do. And a lot, a lot of that is just the environment we've yeah, been brought up in. Environmental factors are, I, I think, number one. Bro. Yeah. How you are raised, where you are raised, how much time was given to you as a kid growing up. Everything, it's, environment is everything, bro. Which is why I feel like everybody should take their time to like prime their environment. Spicy. You have Apple Notes, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Still getting used to all of this. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Philip is going to entertain you guys. I don't know if you guys heard, but that sound effect was popping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give us credit, huh? Ten <laughs> percent commission. Ten percent commission for what? To use that audio if they ever want to use it. Oh yeah. Um, free me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, please. Use it. Clearly, I was feeling something when I wrote all these points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's feel them again. All right, so. Hmm. We have spoken about the NRI life mm -hmm. and how work life has been for us and also the general day-to-day -day life. But I wanted to ask you or just get to know if you also feel us in a similar way. What about the love life? Crushes, relationships, all that sort of thing. How has it been how it was in Qatar versus how is it here? How's, what do you think is the cultural difference? If at all. Hmm. Because I've noticed it. I mean, I lived in a country where there was no public display of affection. Like you'd be thrown into jail for that shit. <laughs> this feels... Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't hold hands. Not even holding hands? No. Damn. Yeah, it's rough. So, over there, I think people, if I ever found somebody in the workforce, like, the options are so limited that you just hold on to it. Like, you'll cling to it, for sure. Mm. Now, school life is a little different, uh, and I'm only speculating the adult life. Mm. But from what I observe, yeah, it's a very isolated country. Over here, you can literally walk down the street and, like, Make a girlfriend. If. <laughs> what was that meme? Send bombs and Van Jean. <laughs> Just text that guy. So works 100% of the time. But literally, like, you can... If you are extremely socially calibrated and you're very smooth while being very respectful, you can literally walk down the road make four or five female friends and then go on a couple of dates with them and then see where that goes. That I agree with. Maybe not so much the street thing. <laughs> but I even, mean, if, even in your... Example, yeah, you know? extreme example. But even in your circles, I would say that is more prevalent than, than it is in Singapore, for sure, also. Yeah. In Singapore, I feel like it's very reserved. It's there. It's not to the extent of not being allowed to hold hands and stuff. You can make out also in public if you want to. Uh, as long as there's no indecency happening. Mm -hmm. So maybe don't do it outside a primary school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You could do it in a mall if you want. <laughs> Got it. But it was still in a very, done in a very reserved way. You hardly saw it. I'm not saying that you see that in India. Even here you'll get beat up if a guy and girl are caught smooching somewhere. But I would say the culture is a lot more fluid in that sense. Yeah. And so, I don't know, It's I just feel like it was already hard there. Now, this is different. Now, I have to adjust to this also. It's still hard now. Right. Ladki kab me legi, bhai. Or ladka, whatever your preference is. Fair enough. Uh, I think it's all about being comfortable, being uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable for me to, like, go up to a girl and talk. Like, I'll think 15 times and go through hundred scenarios before I even make the first 
step right. towards like approaching the garden <laughs> even then midway i'll be like nope <laughs> and then take a u turn you know right <laughs> it's yeah it's bad maybe you need a wingman yeah Vahaj, i've seen this so much in like us and stuff yeah wahaj is my wingman oh yeah. oh yeah you were telling me the story uh you want to share the story or not <laughs> It's okay maybe <laughs> next time maybe <laughs> next time if you want the story comment below <laughs> hey subscribe also huh? they just will literally fly down from singapore just to see me so that i can tell the story to y'all so make that happen yeah as long as he's paying i'm down any time no no i'm not paying <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've genuinely been trying to approach people girls specifically although it hasn't really happened that much I feel a lot more confident in at least looking at them mm. like making eye contact at least like that's first step mm. that's what the love is bro <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the eyes chico yeah <laughs> <laughs> also by the way not an ad just very yummy <laughs> <laughs> that that i can but uh, white castle if you are listening if you want to sponsor us <laughs> yeah extra, i would yeah. love that <laughs> because this is amazing yeah we had dinner before we were recording this podcast and i was just telling philip like how did someone come up with an idea to make this yeah like it's it crumbles the moment it reaches your mouth is it on auto focus probably <laughs> oh shit did you check <laughs> It's My auto focus not very good. If it's on manual and if you're out of focus, oh no, it's on manual. It's on manual. Yeah, yeah. Not on manual. It's on manual. It is on manual. Yeah, yeah. But it is in focus. Yeah. Pakka. Pakka. Okay. I will find out in post. <laughs> you guys will find out at the zero zero mark. <laughs> If I don't have many girls in my life, I'll be very transparent about that. And. the girl that you mean life. like platonic and yeah, bro a mix of both right yeah, yeah okay cool. mostly all platonic because i don't have it bro <laughs> <laughs> out <laughs> any girls uh filiwonka <laughs> all the relevant links are below <laughs> <laughs> it's all pl- not platonic relationships but the moment a girl gives me the slightest bit of attention amongst those that platonic group it's like my mind goes to like, uh uh-huh. huh it shouldn't be that way like people can be nice to you and that shouldn't be interpreted as flirting and it's really nice to be able to reach that point and not even think twice about it you know like you're just so secure with like the women in your life because you have other women in your life girls have that by the way yeah they understand this because they what? have it they have what boys in their life yeah a lot of them yeah and i'm so not so they know how it is where we may think of it as flirting yeah but it's actually not because they are just having a normal conversation yeah because they have that with their male friends yeah because we are the unfortunate ones who didn't end up having that many female friends growing up <laughs> we think of any slightest of attention as as flirting yeah. and as an advance towards yeah. me used to be very true earlier on now i think i've gotten a lot more mature th- about these things i don't think of it that way now right as much right. still happens but not as much yeah it's it is very much the case we didn't have much girls by our side growing up it was like it was all guy friends and like really great guy friends they were also all lonely <laughs> yeah katha gave you that impression of loneliness yeah same for singapore especially between like genders like i had a crush on a school friend who was in the same bus as me that was living in the same compound <laughs> so I was dating her for a while. Dating. <laughs> High school, bro. Childhood love. <laughs> Seriously. Uh and Nibba Nibbi. 
and uh, her mom wouldn't allow her to step outside her house in the evening and she couldn't be seen out with the boys just like walking also like no holding hands no bullshit like that just talking and walking no no even if the group was mixed like there's other yeah. girls and yeah there was one girl who was a very big tomboy mm-hmm. her parents gave no fucks about her <laughs> and she used to hang out with us a lot by 8th grade she started disassociating teenagers yeah so understandable also yeah. she also want to be with girls yeah. yeah so it's like when i first came to bombay bro i was terrified bro i was like <laughs> fuck women are so pretty <laughs> <laughs> bro it was that it was like an eye opener i was like what the fuck like movie actors everywhere bhai like <laughs> where am i mumbai meri jaan mumbai meri jaan i was like god damn and you know what's even more depressing mumbai is the only place that makes you feel lonely at a chemist because at the chemist also there are couples picking out ice cream for each other bhai like oh, what the yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused for a moment <laughs> there. <laughs> But it's true, right? Yeah, yeah, that is true. I've seen that. I, yeah. Like fucking good-looking couples will come at the med- medical while you are there with the cold searching for the why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then they be like, "Mere ko ye khana hai." I'm like, "What the fuck, bro? <laughs> Just get the fuck out of here, bro. I am not in the mood." And and you wonder, when do I get this? when will my time come i was actually thinking of our parents generation i don't think they got to live their love lives the way they would have anticipated hmm cuz they were always slogging away hmm. growing up hmm. one person was doing this the other one was doing this that sometimes it feels like yeah bro india mein rehte to chill hota to translate <laughs> if they had stayed in india it would have been fine as well yeah life would have been very different obviously mm-hmm. maybe i wouldn't be doing this podcast yeah. in that life you wouldn't i don't know maybe a you wouldn't would have be met bro. me we yeah. wouldn't have vibed on the nr i think yeah it's yeah yeah it's okay i'm happy with what my story is it's fucking fantastic it is for <laughs> sure but yeah i to come back to the topic i i know the feeling of kab milega yeah Yeah, like when will I when will I have that yeah. that I've been seeking out for so long it's strange that us humans think that way yeah i mean i guess a core part of our, about the human experience is to love to love mm-hmm. to be in groups mm-hmm. have companions yeah like being alone for a while is really good for you but at the end of the day you need a balance Hmm. You can't be doing only alone things or only outside things. Hmm. There needs to be a balance. I fully agree, which is why I wanted my own space. Yeah, alone time and companionship time, both. I had that when I was living here. Yeah, you lived two years alone in Bombay. Uh, yeah, like one ish year. I had other flatmates, but the only alone time was maybe about one ish year, like proper alone time. best vibe <laughs> how was that during covid though because you dur- not during covid but like during college cuz my college experience was insane mm-hmm. because of my roommates okay fair enough It's wild life yeah i know some of it <laughs> wouldn't take back any of it yeah for sure it's your story bro It was an experience. Yeah. It's all about giving in experience. Yeah. Or so taking in experience. I feel like I will come to that point in my life where I will return to that stage but with a different set of friends with a different set of mission. That makes sense. And part of that would be moving. And the patterns continue. <laughs> <laughs> No but I I seriously feel with this NRI thing right and like most of my friends in Singapore are also Indians also NRIs 
and so we all sort of have that mini group in in that sense where we understand certain right. things that are very different from the local indian singaporeans there right and that's also different from the local indians here in india so we sort of fit in this group where when we were neither here nor there yeah and so growing up there was a part of me that never felt like i belonged to singapore and when i shifted to india when i lived here for 2 plus years i still didn't feel that and i know that even if i spend 10 years here i still won't have that feeling i will still feel like i'm an outsider yeah because i've 25 plus years or something i've lived in singapore hmm. so yeah that like i'm accustomed to that yeah it's a very strong uh, relationship with like a country that you have built yeah that's very crucial to your identity mhm disassociating with that is disassociating with a large part of you that's true so we'll cling on to it bro life bro <laughs> <laughs> no like but i will never accept me i to them i'm nothing i'll go there one day my visa will run out and there will be a fuck off no fucks given mm, i just realized the difference we have in our and our lives you're still an indian citizen yeah i have a singapore passport yeah yeah that's the difference that is a difference that's a big difference you can actually leave that you have that option i don't <laughs> oh what ha to i am a citizen now right like i can't just give it up <laughs> unless i shift to another country and make that whole ass move then maybe i could give it up some day ha huh. but i can't just give it up now i can live here whenever because i'm in oci you right so i can leave india whenever i want yeah i can't leave singapore whenever i want ta and so i never belonged there hmm never really felt like i belonged here yeah identity if crisis if i go to us i'll feel the same thing yeah even if crisis. good job opportunities or yeah. better quality of life and all of that for sure no matter where i go hmm. i have no place called home this yeah. is a problem that all third culture kids have yeah i have a home in kerala i do have a home but i have never spent time at home as in it was so shabby that every single time we entered the house again after when we last left it it felt like it was a construction site like it was that dusty we had to like go through everything rearrange everything and then by the time that's done 10 days goes by and we go back to kata <laughs> <laughs> all of these things nobody that has never experienced I will understand but it's not i can see it i may not understand it but yeah. i can see that perspective yeah, yeah. all of these things have shaped us to want something and i don't yeah, think sure. we should allow other people to tell us what a right or wrong decision according to that want is that's true i agree with you which is why i don't like telling other people what to do i just like telling them my take on it mm. and if they want to implement it they can yeah for sure that is the best way i feel yeah i don't want someone shoving down do this yeah. then you'll do this yeah <laughs> yeah it's just i've tried to avoid doing that with my own videos as well mm. like when i was doing the um like how to battle anxiety video i didn't say i hope i didn't i can't remember the exact script now but i don't think i said uh like you have to do meditation hmm. you have to journal hmm. i said this is what i know this is what i did this is my experience of it you do whichever one you want you'll have a different experience yeah so there's no point in me telling you you have to meditate to yeah. feel better or you have to exercise every day to feel better yeah whatever the factor is i think i'm just creating content that i would want to watch makes sense if you can get one view you can get a million yeah it just needs to yeah from zero 
it'll take time for sure but the more people can follow along to your life and relate to it mm. the faster the growth will be just be aware of competitors though some people just do that to leech on to you for a while so that they can jump even higher like what like what do you like someone who's in the similar field as you mm. who may get close to you just so that they can go even higher by pushing you down got it happens so just be aware of those kind of people for sure yeah from new year i'm going to genuinely reduce my friend group interaction like i feel I hope not me <laughs> no for sure not you but it's just i have some friends that i shouldn't really be paying attention to but i do yeah i mean if it's not worth your energy then yeah dude energy is powerful energy is very powerful it's very powerful if you're not feeling the right energy just dip <laughs> yeah <laughs> do yourself a favor and just do it yeah i know it's hard to hard for people pleasers been there done that but honestly once you stop giving a damn <laughs> yeah it's just it improves your life for sure try it if you want don't if you don't want to mm. i'm not shoving it down anyone's throat <laughs> Let's go back to love, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not dating anyone, not seeing anyone, not thinking of seeing anyone. Not on any dating apps. Uh, hardly existing on Instagram. <laughs> mm. But, but making the active effort to go and cold approach. Mm. Try to. Mm. Yeah. Not for like cheap sex or. you know anything of that nature yeah i don't think i was thinking of that <laughs> okay but just to get over the fear of okay talking to a girl i have a very big fear mm. do you i don't feel like i can do the whole cut out thing cut out like cut out all girls from my life the way you have in a way right i for me it's like i need some balance mm. i need that also I recently had a gossip session with some of our friends. Best. I need that also. <laughs> right. You know, I just need something where I'm it's just we're just talking random shit. And it's like, you know, this sort of thing like gossip. Which may not necessarily be a good thing, but it's a fun thing to do, yeah. divulge in, indulge in yeah. every once in a while. But it's also nice when I when it's this vibe. or if it's a vibe with someone else it's it's a different experience for all of them for sure yeah and i don't want to remove the possibility of missing out on such an experience right. by completely cutting off right yeah. for Very you you're understand. learning this way for me i'm learning this way i want to know that perspective also got it but you're also like let's face it nobody really takes time alone for themselves in a city like bombay you know like i know so many people that literally broke up one day and then the next day they were with another person like there was no thought given to shit my relationship ended like why okay let me reminisce on this or like let me think about this or let me just spend some time with myself mm. I mean I guess people move on differently. Yeah, just they move on differently. You may move on differently. Maybe. I don't do that, so I am on a similar boat as you. But I also know people who will do that to get over the last one. Yeah. There's no there's no slowness to it. Yeah. Everyone wants to just rush from one thing to another. Yeah. Because they don't want to spend their valuable precious time whatever on improving that aspect for themselves mm-hmm. they don't think it's worth spending 1 hour or 2 hours of my day for my own self improvement right no one has the time for that not even 30 minutes for some people so the quick and easy dirty way is to go out clubbing or whatever you're with your friends you meet someone done deal you move on But for I've some done, people that works but like cool oh. good for them but yeah but here's the thing right i don't think i'm capable of doing that neither am i 
I don't think I can do that, bro. <laughs> like, not not in like, fuck, it doesn't sit right with my morals, but I don't think I can pull a chick like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why do you want to pull that chick? There's seven, how many billion people are there in the world? Four billion girls. Any chick, bro. Any chick at the club. <laughs> I can't pull it. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you're finding it in the wrong place. Maybe you need to go to a library or a cafe. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not starting with that story. <laughs> what would truly make you happy in terms of love right now? For love life? Um, what would make me happy eventually? Right now. Right now. I know that I'm not ready to be in a relationship right now. Mm-hmm. And most of this year has also, sp- I've spent doing a lot of self-care related things. I'm doing things for myself, improving my own life. And until I feel like I've reached a certain stage where I can handle doing that and also be with someone, till then, I don't think I'll be ready to date anyone. Got it. Right now, I don't think I've reached that level yet for the self-care part and yeah it doesn't have to reach the optimal level just in enough where i can balance both so let's see it can happen in a few months it could be a few years could be tomorrow could be too <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah like i think what would make me happiest would just be Dating without any strings attached. That reminds me of something that I wanted to talk about related to this topic. You are basically describing a situationship. Which situationships have emotional um, entanglements to uh, it. No, no, no. You start with that only. You start saying, no, we are not getting into a relationship. So no lovey-dovey stuff. But we'll do everything there is to do in a relationship. What? Yeah, that's a situation ship. As in, like, they won't... It's practically a relationship only. You're just not labeling it as a, you're my boyfriend, you're my girlfriend. Okay. We are seeing each other. Right. That's a more appropriate term. Yeah. So... So what are you saying? Situationships So what you don't just have... described, no strings attached, that's yeah. how situationships start. Eventually, it leads to one, at least one of the parties falling in love with the other. And then getting their heart broken because the other doesn't reciprocate. So someone in such a situation ship is always going to be in a not happy state. Mm. Unless both are truly, truly uh, non-monogamous or whatever. Mm. But I think for the monogamous people, yeah, I wouldn't want to. It just has to be the one. I feel like the last part didn't make sense. It made sense. It's just... I just want to have good sex, man. (laughs) Okay, then. (laughs) No. (laughs) Truly, it's... I don't want no drama. I don't want any, like... Shit, he didn't text me back. Or she didn't text me back. Bullshit. It's just... Simple, nice and easy, friends with benefits kind of a situation. Where... Yeah, that's just... Situationship is just a fancy word for friends with benefits. <laughs> no, friends with benefits is like... You guys were already platonic. You guys didn't move into it with the idea of like, I like you, you like me. Not sure if that's always applicable, but... Yeah, could but be. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not out of the question, right? Okay. And friends with benefits is like, I think you fuck, let's fuck. <laughs> Thoughts of a 22 year old. <laughs> 22, that's right? that's how Hollywood has painted it also for us, right? Oh yeah, the culture there that I've seen growing up through movies, TV shows, so different. Yeah. Very random, but one thing that's always like sort of st- stood out to me, you know, in like those shows when they show someone's going on a date, let's say a guy, okay, a guy is going on a date, one of the main cast. 
he's always wearing a coat and suit and everything and they always go to a fancy restaurant right it's always like that for a date yeah bro i have grown up in singapore bro even a chai stall wala is a good date if the person is right mm. <laughs> like theek hai you can still go to an expensive place that's also very normal but you don't wear a suit and coat and tie yeah. and everything which they do there yeah which has always been so weird to me yeah was that only a 90s early 2000s thing or is that something they still do i don't know i think they still do it because in the bear also the guy was wearing the oh yeah but hmm like he's a chef bro fair enough makes a point yeah 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 then yeah it's a thing there which i don't get here yeah <laughs> Oh here like girls might dress up in party wear guys might dress up in party wear but that's it. Yeah. It's nothing formal about it. Yeah. We could wear a shirt. Yeah. Like office attire yeah. but not suit, suit or coat. Yeah. Yeah, that is something I found strange about the dating culture that I've seen through TVs and shows, mm. uh, TVs and uh movies. Yeah, for sure. Shall we wrap? We can wrap. Okay. All right. First guest series episode of Candid Corner. First guest series that lasted more than an hour I think. Yeah. And uh I liked it. We started this also very late. Mm. And I think it's time to crash. Yeah, for sure. I'm so, very tired. Yeah. And I'm sweating balls. Yeah, we had to switch off the fan so it makes less For y'all. <laughs> okay, for y'all. Subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Both channels. <laughs> Yeah. Can't wait to watch this. Honestly, actually, yeah, I can't wait to. Uh, I think I think more more than half of it is gonna be ex- excluded. Maybe not half. Yeah, maybe it could be forty five minutes. Yeah, yeah, probably instead of one hour, thirteen minutes a day. So. <laughs> so half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In fifteen more minutes, it'll be half. Yeah. <laughs> Too much maths, bro. Too much maths. Too much maths. Okay. Anyway. Um, Yeah, this was the first guest series in the Candid Corner. Very thankful and glad that you were here to to do that with me. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did as well. I had massive maja. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope you had fun as well. And uh, yeah, I think Philip and I are just gonna bid adieu now and head to bed and in separate beds. <laughs> Drink water. <laughs> Drink water. Stay hydrated. And uh, I don't know. I something. Okay, cool. Peace. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. This is the Candid Corner. I'm Vijay Thakre. That's Philip George. We, we out. out. <laughs> you can just remove the we out. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. This is where the theme song plays. <laughs> But no, you should do more con- candid corners with guests. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's gonna be a few more. I hope. This this will be cut and put in the last part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. While I'm editing, remember the stages. <laughs> right.